Okay, let's talk about one of the most significant problems, although it's considered benign, but often a reason for treatment discontinuation, which is sialuria. Now, many of you understand the pharmacology of salivary glands and know that there are a number of muscarinic receptor subtypes which are expressed there. But what we understand is that more likely than not, the problem related to clozapine has to do with its metabolite norclozapine, which is also called N-dismethylclozapine. This turns out to be a muscarinic M1 agonist, and we believe this is responsible for the drooling. So although the parent compound clozapine may be an antagonist at a number of muscarinic receptors, the metabolite is an agonist. This is why we have people who are both constipated and drool at the same time. We're getting the mixed properties of both the parent compound and the metabolite. The evidence that it's the M1 effects uh, come from trials of parenzepine, which is an M1 selective anticholinergic agent available mostly in Europe. But there are case reports and case series of people who were, were administered parenzepine, and this seemed to block the sialuria induced by clozapine. So what's the general approach to this? Occasionally, you can try dose reduction, but often this does not get you much mileage. We prefer, in the state hospital system, always starting with locally applied agents. As we will discuss, constipation is an enormous problem in patients with clozapine, and one does not wish to add to this anticholinergic burden through the unnecessary use of systemic anticholinergics unless it is absolutely necessary. The starting treatments are either atropine 1% ophthalmic drops administered sublingually, not in the eye, sublingually. The slides here say one to two drops initially at bedtime and up to TID, and we will certainly go even to three drops as needed up to TID if that's what we need to get good control of the sialuria. If that doesn't work, the other option is ipatropium spray. Again, this was developed as a nasal spray, but you're going to spray it in the mouth and use the higher strength, which is 0.06%. Again, you can go up to three sprays, TID. And the reason to manage this is that there is a literature out there about patients on clozapine having increased risk for pneumonia. And we think this has to do with aspiration events, which may occur at night. And of course, for people who drool, there's also the social problem of their appearance in public. So it's really something to be attentive to and be very aggressive at treating. If the locally applied agents simply do not work, then one has ample justification for going to the systemic drugs, knowing that you are incurring a burden of increased risk of constipation. So one option includes glycopyrrolate. Uh, We prefer this over other agents such as benztropine, simply because glycopyrrolate does not cross the blood-brain barrier. So you are not going to incur the central anticholinergic effects, which one might get from benztropine or Artane or other anticholinergic anti Parkinsonian medications. The usual dose is two to four milligrams at night. One can go up to slightly higher doses. It is worth knowing, though, that there is an alternative to glycopyrrolate, which can be considered in certain patients if their blood pressure will tolerate it, and this is the use of the alpha-1 antagonist terazosin. The doses which have been studied are relatively modest. One milligram at bedtime would be the starting dose, and if this is tolerated, one can, after one to two weeks, go up to two milligrams. The biggest risk, of course, is going to be orthostasis, but the advantage is that if this works, you avoid all of the peripheral anticholinergic effects of a medication such as glycopyrrolate. If somebody has a partial response to the locally applied agents, these should be kept on board while you're adding the other agent, whether it's terazosin or then later on glycopyrrolate. But it is important to get on top of this. Again, this may be a reason that the patient will say, I don't want to take this medicine, A, and B, it may present a risk for aspiration pneumonia later on. So to summarize, sialuria presents social and medical consequences, particularly the risk for aspiration pneumonia. Orally applied medications such as atropine 1% drops or ipatropium 0.06% spray are preferred as they do not increase constipation risk. For the same reason, consider trying low-dose terazosin before using glycopyrrolate if the orally applied medications are not sufficiently effective.